At the time of this writing, the New England Patriots are in a state of flux. Living legends Tom Brady and Bill Belichick are gone, and the Pats recorded a losing record in both 2022 and 2023. But no one's feeling sorry for New England football fans because for two decades, starting soon after the dawn of the new millennium, the Patriots dominated the NFL, collecting six Super Bowl rings. For many Connecticut sports enthusiasts, however, the Pats' dominance during that stretch was bittersweet. Sure, being New Englanders, the Patriots are their team, but the Pats were nearly Connecticut's team for real. Before the Patriots moved into their newly constructed stadium in Massachusetts in 2002, team owner Robert Kraft considered bringing the Pats to Hartford, and the talks he had with Connecticut leaders were serious as can be. In the late 90s, Kraft and Connecticut Governor John Rowland were all over the news singing each other's praises. Then a deal was signed, and the Connecticut legislature approved funding for a riverfront complex in Hartford, dubbed Adrian's Landing, which was to include a stadium for the Patriots, shops, and upscale apartments. It looked like this was really going to happen. But the plan fell through, fingers were pointed in every direction, and Hartford missed out on being the home of the New England Patriots at the start of the Brady-Belichick era. Let's dissect the game tape and unpack exactly what happened here. Welcome to Wicked Connecticut. On November 18, 1998, Connecticut's largest newspaper, the Hartford Current, published a special edition to announce the New England Patriots' imminent move to Hartford. The Patriots are coming, the paper proclaimed, reporting that Robert Kraft and Connecticut Governor John Rowland had just signed a deal that included a 30-year commitment for the Patriots to be in Hartford. Rowland and Kraft were hailed like conquering heroes as they walked together into a news conference attended by hundreds of politicians and media from throughout the region. This is a historic day for the Hartford community, Roland declared, to loud, long applause in a jam-packed room in the Capitol building. If we are as successful as we think we will be, said Roland, the Patriots in the fall of 2001 will play their first home game here. Looking around at all the excitement, tears welled in Kraft's eyes. The Pats owner told the crowd about the team's history of stadium woes and thanked Connecticut officials for working with him on the Hartford site. We really wanted to be in an urban setting, said Kraft referring to the proposed Adrian's Landing project. We're going to bring a championship home, Kraft said to applause. Robert Kraft had planned to keep the Patriots in Massachusetts, but when state lawmakers failed to strike a deal to build the team a new venue next door to the outdated Foxborough Stadium, Kraft began looking at Connecticut, and Governor John Rowland, a young, brash Republican with big political aspirations, rolled out the red carpet. A 2017 Sports Illustrated article states that Rowland had to lure Kraft with an extremely lopsided deal. Tim Rohan writes, Rowland offered for the state to pay the entire cost of the stadium, about $374 million, and to give the leftover money directly to Kraft if the stadium cost less to build. The article continues, Rowland agreed to build new infrastructure that would allow parking lots to empty in one hour and then he promised to buy back any luxury suites that went unsold and pay the team whatever it lost on local sponsorship deals due to playing in a smaller market. That money would also escalate each year based on revenues of other teams around the NFL, and the state would be paying this money and buying these seats for 30 years. Sports economists suggested that, in total, the deal would be worth $1 billion. At the very least, the deal would make the Patriots the number one revenue earner in the NFL. This is the greatest deal I've ever seen, one league official said in the article. While Connecticut celebrated, neighboring states were mystified by Kraft's plan to relocate the Patriots to Hartford. Providence Mayor Buddy Cianci, who tried to lure the Pats to Rhode Island, told the Providence Journal, Hartford was not the city Kraft was interested in. Has Hartford become the celebrated city of the Northeast? You can marry an ugly woman for enough money, I guess. And the Boston Globe's Dan Shaughnessy wrote in a page one column that there was no way Kraft would take his quote-unquote bigger-than-the-sitgo sign ego to Hartford, a city Shaughnessy referred to as America's file cabinet and a Yahoo sports town. 
The New York Times added to the pylon, labeling Hartford a blighted insurance town between the lights of New York and Boston. The NFL had serious doubts about Hartford as well. League Commissioner Paul Tagliabue said he warned Kraft repeatedly that Connecticut's capital was a poor alternative to Foxborough. Tagliabue even enlisted NFL executive Roger Goodell, now the league commissioner, to help torpedo the plan. As we know, Kraft did decide to abandon Connecticut. On April 30, 1999, he sent Governor Rowland a letter notifying him that he was opting out of the Hartford Stadium deal, blaming environmental and infrastructure problems at the Adrian's Landing site. Rowland didn't buy that explanation and threatened legal action against Kraft and the NFL. No one walks away from a $374 million proposal because a plan might be a year later than expected, Rowland told reporters in the Capitol, standing in the same room where, just a few months prior, he and Kraft had jubilantly signed the initial agreement to bring the Patriots to Connecticut. And I suggested to Kraft that perhaps he had some other alternatives and plans in the works, and I'm sure we'll find out more about that in the not-too-distant future. Connecticut Senate leader Kevin Sullivan was much more blunt in his assessment of the situation. Kraft played the state of Connecticut in order to leverage his position in Boston, where he was always going to be, Sullivan said. It was just a question of when they would write a bigger check and give him the benefits he wanted. In the end, NFL executive Roger Goodell, at the behest of League Commissioner Paul Tagliabue, managed to convince enough powerful people in Massachusetts to make a last-minute pitch to keep the Patriots in Foxborough. And team owner Robert Kraft liked what he heard. Kraft would build the new Gillette Stadium himself with the help of an NFL loan program, and Massachusetts would pay about $70 million for infrastructure improvements at the site. The Patriots weren't going anywhere. This news was devastating for Connecticut sports fans, who were still hurting from the loss of the NHL's Whalers, who skated out of Hartford in 1997. Hartford Mayor Michael Peters, an out-front proponent of the Adrian's Landing Project, was among the heartbroken. It sucks, the usually gregarious mayor stated. How's that? Is that okay? The Patriots played their first game at Gillette Stadium on September 9, 2002, and christened the field with a big win over the Pittsburgh Steelers. Over the next two decades, the Pats would do a lot of winning at Gillette Stadium and across the country. With quarterback Tom Brady and head coach Bill Belichick leading the way, the Patriots collected Super Bowl titles in 2001, 2003, 2004, 2014, 2016, and 2018. Imagine what that level of success could have meant for Hartford. The economic impact would have been staggering, let alone the civic pride the Patriots would have whipped up in this blighted insurance town between the lights of New York and Boston. The good news is, the Adrian's Landing Project went forward in Hartford, minus the NFL stadium, of course. Now the area has a lot to offer, from a convention center to a science museum to housing, restaurants, and entertainment. Also, Duncan Park, home of the Hartford Yard Goats baseball team, opened in the city in 2017 and was voted Ballpark Digest's best minor league ballpark among AA facilities in both 2017 and 2018. Sure, it's not the Lombardi Trophy, or six, but it's something. Keep your chin up, Hartford. Remember John Rowland? Connecticut's governor during Hartford's doomed dance with the Patriots? Well, his once promising career in politics was sacked, and it had nothing to do with football. In 2004, during his third term in office, Rowland resigned amid a corruption investigation and later pleaded guilty in federal court to a one-count indictment. The former governor served 10 months in a federal prison, followed by four months' house arrest. Less than a decade after he completed his sentence, Rowland ran afoul of the law once again. In 2014, the disgraced politician was indicted on seven counts for his role in an election fraud case involving a congressional candidate in Connecticut. This time, Rowland was sentenced to 30 months behind bars. He was released in 2018 and, so far, has stayed out of trouble. I would like to give a shout-out to the many journalists whose work I poured over, 
in order to piece together this narrative. Much obliged. Thanks for listening to Wicked Connecticut. Feel free to email me. The address is in the show notes. Until next time, I'm your host, John Haynes.